And now, drop the dead donkey. This episode was first broadcast in a week when Parliament was recalled to debate the growing risk of war with Iraq. Now we feel very so strongly so you're, about uh, that. So you're saying, Minister, that you blame problems in our schools on lack of parental discipline, but surely lack of parental discipline doesn't cause teacher shortages. Uh, with respect, Henry, it's not as simple as that. The lack of parental discipline is just merely the tip of an iceberg. It's a very large one, uh, menacing, uh, uh, floating, uh, most of it. Uh, <laughs> invisible. <laughs> Quite, um, well, <clears throat> unpredictable. Um, <clears throat> sorry, a bit of a frog in the throat. Could we go on that question again? Yes, we'll have to go again. Cart comes. You see, every time he balls up an answer, that happened. I've never seen anybody with so many frogs in his throat. He must have swallowed a lily pond. Before the interview began, he gave us a list of areas he wouldn't comment on. Oh, come on, Dave. They've always bent the rules. Wilson, Callahan. Yes, but it's getting worse, George. You want me, George? Ah, oh, yes, Jenny. Now, don't tell Henry, but BAFTA want to present him with some kind of honorary award. So do you think you could dig through the archives and put together some highlights from Henry's career? Oh, what, you mean like the time he got pissed and tried to touch up Jackie Kennedy? <laughs> well, the time he made that attempt to greet Khrushchev in Russian and inadvertently called him a diseased artichoke. <laughs> no, I, I think we'll gloss over those. OK. I'll give you a hand, if you like. I don't think that'll be necessary. Thank you, David. I'll get on to it now. Nice girl. Good brain. Absolutely. Nicest brain I've seen in a long time. Yeah, well, if we could return to the matter in hand. Yes? Uh huh. Okay. Fine. Right. Dave, we're going to need a resume of Kinnock's speech to the TUC. No, we've got ages yet. He's only been going 30 minutes. <laughs> no, he's finished. After 30 minutes, you're joking. No. Has he been assassinated? <laughs> No, he just stopped speaking. Bastard. <laughs> Gentlemen, madam, may I present my nephew's boy, Jack Davenport. Observe the noble patrician Davenport nose, the firm, manly Davenport chin. He hasn't got the Davenport mouth, though, has he? Why do you say that? Well, it's shut. <laughs> this Jack is Alex, a clever woman, but bitter and twisted. Hi. This is Dave. Huh? That's George. Ah, oh, Mr. Dent. I want to thank you for allowing me to sit in and watch for a week. Oh, that's okay, Jack. You see, I've just completed a course in media studies, and I'd love to work in TV news, but well, I've no knowledge of the practical side, so this is really useful. I'll um, try not to get in the way. No problem. Feel free to ask questions. Oh, God, it's him. I tell you, George, it's getting impossible to interview these people. It's your job to make these people say something interesting. Oh, don't be a prat, George. Look at him. How could he say something interesting? <laughs> He's one of the new breed of ministers, an anonymous android. The only interesting thought inside his brain died years ago from agoraphobia. Anyway, are you questioning my experience? No, no, of course. Well, I remind you that I have interviewed every Prime Minister for the last 30 years. Yes, Alec Douglas Hume, patronising bastard. Wilson, shifty bastard. Heath, <laughs> stubborn bastard. Callahan, cunning bastard. Thatcher, cunning, stubborn, shifty, patronising <laughs> bastard. Oh, will you excuse me a second? I just want to have a word with the delicious young Jenny. George, we've just got to stop ministers dictating the terms of these interviews. And you know what will happen if we do? We won't get any more ministers to interview. Every time a big story breaks, the BBC will be interviewing the Prime Minister for her response. And we'll be getting the government reaction from a plumber who wants a block to drain for Kenneth Baker's wife. It would be a laughing stock. Now, the plain reality is we either play by their rules or not at all. Mm, not quite how you imagined it, eh, Jack? Well, actually, it's quite interesting, because we had several lectures about exactly this sort of situation. You see... Oh, sorry, I'm holding you up. No, no, Jack, yeah. How do you mean, this sort of situation? Oh, you know, where subtle pressures from government inhibit programme makers so that they become a bit, well, passive. Being pragmatic is not the same as being passive. 
And unlike your lecturers, I have to live in the real world. Uh, George, there's an escaped hippo in the fast lane of the M25. Do you want a crew to cover it? Definitely. <laughs> Where was I? Living in the real world. Oh, yes. You see, Jack, every editorial decision I make is a very complicated weighing up of different factors. How important is the story? Can I afford the resources? Will Gus let you run it? Who's Gus? Oh, he's our chief executive. He's away this week on one of those survival courses. You know the sort of thing, how to improve your management skills by running around on moors eating lugworms. <laughs> As I was saying, Jack, you see, editorial decisions require very, very careful thought. Oh, absolutely. I realise that, Mr Dent. I just find it fascinating, this whole area of how editorial criteria can damage a broadcaster's credibility. Oh, sorry, I'm burbling again. <laughs> I think Uncle wants me, if you'll excuse me. Yes, well, he uh, seems a bright lad. <laughs> Funny, though, isn't it, how when you're young, you're full of daft ideas about conspiracy and censorship? <laughs> 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 yes, well, I'm doing VT. Apparently, there are some technical problems with the latest footage of Jesse Jackson weeping. Mm. <laughs> Don't worry, George, you did another three takes. <laughs> Nice change, isn't it, to have someone as young and keen as Jack around? Mm. Makes you realise just how tired our coverage has become. That's not that bad. Oh, come on, look at the way we're handling the gulf. Clichéd and repetitive. Well, that's a very difficult story to cover. Good evening. The war didn't start again today. But in the meantime, here's lots of idle speculation and some pictures of some tanks. <laughs> well, it's not just the gulf. I mean, all our coverage is predictable. And we're getting worse. I mean, look at George. Ever since Sir Royston took over, he's become more cautious than ever. I think he's rigged up an alarm, and if anybody has a new idea, anywhere in this building, a red light starts flashing under his desk. <laughs> I would be asking lots of questions. I know you'll help him all you can. Oh, okay. So this is Damien, one of our reporters, who goes out and covers stories. Jack. I do. And this is Sally, who sits behind a desk and simpers. Well, Jack, I must say, it'll be a nice having another young face around the place. Sometimes I feel as though I'm working in an old people's home. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, I, uh, I like your rose. Oh, thank you. Yes, it's a new breed. The Rose Society of Britain asking if they could call it the Sally Smedley. It's very pretty. I have no idea why they'd want to name it after me. Well, perhaps it's a climbing rose. <laughs> <laughs> so, you want to get into TV news eventually, eh, Jack? Yes, as a news reporter. Ah, like me. Well, um... I mean, if you like, I sort of, uh, take you through some of my more recent stuff and, well, well, fill you in on technique, etc. Well, actually, we had to study you for six weeks at college as part of an exercise on TV reporting. Really? Yeah. And, uh, well, what was the verdict? Oh, well, I mean, there was, there was no verdict. It was um, purely an academic study. Well, I... yes, I know, but, I mean, the class must have reached some conclusions about me. Well, yes. Oh, come on, then, come on, let's have them. Well, um, I suppose the, uh, the general feeling was that uh, your reports tend to perhaps sensationalise the story's dramatic impact a bit and possibly miss its true news value in a way that's maybe sort of dated. <laughs> dated? Yes. Uh, Old-fashioned, outmoded. Yes, I know what dated means. <laughs> isn't it, Jack, when people can't accept constructive criticism? Oh, bollocks. <laughs> point proven. Now, Jack, if at any point you feel you'd like a sort of master class on the art of news reading, please feel free. Yes, thank you. In fact, why don't you come along with me now? I've been a newsreader for years. Oh, Alex, you're an experienced cradle snatcher. What do you think of Sally's technique? Here? <laughs> Haven't you got anything better to do? Uh, no. God, we're a motivated team, aren't we? Listen, did I tell you I've applied for a job at NBC? I'll be interviewing next week, so God willing, I could be leaving soon. All right. Well, we'll miss you, obviously. Don't know who's getting your parking space, do you? <laughs> oh, hello. Sally's moving into mega flirt. No, Jack, my days don't have many windows in, but um, well, perhaps an evening sometime over dinner. Right. Yeah, come over here and meet my nephew's boy, Jack, spending the week with us. Oh, right. Oh, well, I hope you enjoy it. I'm sure I will. How long have you worked here? Six months. I'm a trainee. Oh, really? Perhaps you could show me around sometime. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, yes, I'd love yes, to. Yes, well, actually, I'm sure there are lots of things Jenny should be getting on with. Isn't that right, Jenny? I suppose so. <laughs> Lovely girl, mad about me, of course. <laughs> now, French have burnt alive another shipment of British sheep. Bloody frogs. Just because we did it to Joan of Arc. <laughs> We, we shouldn't take this line down. After all, what do they send over here? Cheese that smells of old socks, hysteria pate, and lots of snooty bloody waiters. Well, anyone going into a French restaurant should tell those Ponzi Pierres exactly what we think of them. You always do. Damn right. <laughs> Henry, you do seem to have this irrational hatred of the French. Nonsense. It's totally rational. Look at the Gulf and their bloody aircraft carrier. It goes so slowly, it gets overtaken by sea slugs. <laughs> and when it does arrive, they won't take orders. They just go steaming around the Gulf, shouting, Priorité à droite. <laughs> well, I think that's enough political analysis. <clears throat> now, Jack, uh, <clears throat> on this VDU, you can see the copy I'm preparing for tonight's bulletin. Um, item 16. The TUC are demanding a return to a centralised pay policy. Mm. Hmm? Sorry? No, 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 nothing. Go on. Uh, well, it's just, again, one of the, um, the lectures was about how the word demand is always used when referring to the unions, which sort of implicitly portrays the unions as being the unreasonable party. Employers offer, unions demand. Are you saying I'm writing biased copy? Oh, good Lord, no, not at all. Right. Well, not consciously, anyway. <laughs> it's, it's more that it's a sort of a shared news vocabulary that you use without really thinking about. <laughs> Just like me at his age, raise a sharp mind, not afraid to speak up. <laughs> well, my boy, tonight you and I are going to lay the West End to waste. Anyone else want to tag along with the Magnificent Two, Dave? Yeah, I'm going. How about you, Jenny? Do you fancy a night on the town? I'm not invited, I suppose. Correct. <laughs> Don't worry, Henry. I've no desire to watch you belch and vomit all the way around Bimbo Land. <laughs> nice to have met you, Jack. And as I say, perhaps we could have a session together sometime. Right. Right. <laughs> Come on, Jack. Let us go and desensitize our intestines in the staff canteen. <laughs> how, uh, how old is Jack? I think Henry said he was 21. 21? Mm -hmm. Alex, you don't think my style's dated, do you? Yes. <laughs> Alex is thinking of leaving. What? Really? Who's getting a parking space? <laughs> oh, she'll never leave. Damien, this place is turning into a retirement home for the terminally untalented. I've got to get out. I've already started displaying the first symptoms of the spongiform brain disease that seems to be rampant in this office. No, don't exaggerate. Exaggerate? Do you know what happened to me the other night? I was watching Howard's Way on the telly, right? And I actually caught myself trying to follow the plot. <laughs> <laughs> that it is bad. Did you think Charles and Avril were going to get back together? No. <laughs> Ask me, the US will definitely attack Iraq. Why? Well, because they need a new war to make films about, don't they? <laughs> when they flog Vietnam to death. I mean, a desert war's perfect. You know, lots of cheap location shots in Arizona. <laughs> well, and of course, then they'll get Meryl Streep to play Saddam Hussein's girlfriend, give her a chance to do her Iraqi accent. <laughs> yes. What's the government attitude to other foreigners held in Iraq? You know, all the Indians and Pakistanis. What Indians and Pakistanis? That's the government attitude. <laughs> yes, we'll come back to that one. Right now, Alex, if you could talk us through our coverage of the Commons debate. Oh, right. Well, uh, basically what's going to happen is that Margaret Thatcher's going to make a stirring patriotic speech calling for concerted military action, and then Kinnock's going to get to his feet and violently agree with her. There'll be a bit of uh, flag waving from Marcus Fox, a bit of brown nosing from Edwina Carey. Tony Benn will liken the Gulf crisis to the Toll Puddle Martyrs, and then Tam DL will ask which way the Belgrano was going. <laughs> yes, thank you for that, Alex. Very helpful. Now, the government are banging on about impartiality again, so as we're using that photo of Kenneth Baker looking a bit smarmy, perhaps we'd better balance it with the one of Tony Benn looking like a complete nutter. <laughs> Oh, dear. 
And where have you two been? God knows. <laughs> Last thing I remember, Jack was dancing with Jenny, he was singing my way and I was falling slowly backwards. God, you look rough, Henry. Nonsense, it's his putrid off his lighting. <laughs> I wonder what sort of state the boy Jack is in, eh? He's not made it in, I notice. <laughs> That's youth, you see, no resilience. Yes, well, now you are here, plus we could... Don't uh... worry, I'm late, dear. Um, the whole northern line was out, so I decided to run it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, Jack. Right, now we've got this interview with Moynihan. <laughs> Now, can we please remember to block Moynihan's chair up nine inches this time? <laughs> Otherwise, he's going to accuse us of trying to make him look small again. He ran in. <laughs> now, there's a leak on next month's inflation figures. He ran in. Where did you run in from? Oh, only from Highgate. A mere seven miles. <clears throat> Do you mind? Sorry, George. Oh. Now, read this leak. Jenny lives... In Highgate. Apparently the Treasury is saying that the... Uh, He's had Jenny. <laughs> There's been a leak that next month's inflation figure will be above 10%. Um... Yes, Jack? Well, it's just that the government have been doing that a lot recently. You know, leaking a high figure. Then when the real figure turns out to be less, well, it softens the impact. I just think it's an interesting area. Yes, fascinating, I'm sure. But unfortunately, on air, we only have a limited amount of time. Oh, yeah, I understand that. I just think it's an example of how government can use TV. Like with the unemployment figures. What about the unemployment figures? Oh, you know, how they've knocked half a million off the figures by constantly redefining the term unemployed. <laughs> well, what do you suggest? Perhaps we should run a caption which says, latest government figures, but don't forget what lying bastards they are. <laughs> well, no. I just wonder whether these figures should be accepted at face value. Yes, well, I think this meeting's gone off at a bit of a tangent, actually. And if you'll excuse me, in my capacity as Minister for Propaganda, I've got some pro-government rallies to go and organise. <laughs> Please, Mr Dent, don't misunderstand me. I was only making a general point. It's funny, isn't it? Till Jack arrived, I regarded myself as a young man. The young man can stay out till all hours, drink like a fish, screw all night, and then run in from Highgate. I think I'll go and lie down. Oh, it's pathetic. Wallowing in self-pity just because Jack makes you feel old. Well, he makes you feel old, too. So does Jenny. Rubbish! No one makes me feel old. Good morning, Sally. I'm sorry, I've no time for idle chit-chat. <laughs> what's got into her? I think it's what's got into you that's got into her. <laughs> Psychogeriatric ward. No, it's a joke. Yeah. Yeah, all right, I'll tell you. Yeah. There's some more stuff on this Virgin airlift to Amman. Branson says the objective is to bring back as many hostages as possible, and he's flown out there in person. Well, that's one seat wasted. <laughs> now, the Prime Minister's reiterating that any Iraqis who commit atrocities will suffer the same fate as German war criminals. Yeah, given a pension and signed up for the British Secret Service. I didn't mean to offend you about the statistics. I, I just get caught up in everything. Oh, that's OK, Jack. I, uh, I overreacted. I'm sorry. I'm really very grateful to you for letting me sit in and everything, and, but I was wondering... Wondering what? This is my rooms, George. Notice anything unusual about it? It's covered in green fly. Correction, George. Someone has painted lots of little green spots. <laughs> now, I want an investigation into this vandalism, George, or I shall be notifying my personal contacts in the police force. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you were saying? Well, it's just that Jenny mentioned there was a researcher's job going, and I was wondering if I could apply. No, no, that's, that's fine, Jack. I'm not making any promises, though. But I understand. Thanks, Mr Dent, and please ignore all that stuff earlier. You're the man with the experience. Your judgment's bang on, I'm sure. I wish I was. <laughs> now, there's speculation that the Iraqis might use anthrax against our troops. That's a, that dreadful virus that originates in cattle, isn't it? Yeah. They won't dare use that against us. Why not? We got BSE. 
<laughs> oh, yes. First sign of funny business, we send the RAF over to bomb Baghdad with diseased cows. <laughs> Another statement from the Iraqi saying Thatcher is a grey-haired old hag with a canine voice who vomits poison like a spotted serpent. Who won't get round her with flattery? <laughs> <laughs> There's a postcard from Gus. Apparently he's camping out on the Brecon beacons in a bivouac made from ferns and twigs. <laughs> OK, Henry. BAFTA presented me with an honorary award for my services to broadcasting. Yeah, That's well, marvellous. No, it isn't. Services to broadcasting. It's one of those, my God, let's give him something quick before he snuffs it award. <laughs> Bloody BAFTA. You know what BAFTA stands for? Boring Association for Television Arseholes. <laughs> well, they can stick their sodding tribute. All right, Henry, calm down. Well, why is everyone so touchy? Moynihan just rang. He said if the chair's not high enough, he want the desk lowered. <laughs> And I just had a phone call from the Paris police. Three of Gus's team are in hospital after he made them eat tree bark. <laughs> what the hell is... Oh, for God's sake! What was all that about? Sally's rose has just gone down with blue fly. <laughs> blue fly? We ran out of green paint. <laughs> like working with four-year-olds. All right, now where was I? Oh, yes. Jack is applying for the uh, vacant post of researcher. All right. Oh, well, why not? He's very bright, quick learner. Yes, he, he seems very capable. And he is very keen, which is a plus. Yes, and his attitude's very good. Very mm. good. Absolutely, he's bright and keen, his attitude's good. He's perfect in many ways, perfect. Yes, that's right. I, I was just wondering, though, <laughs> he is perhaps a... Uh, Teens a bit on the um, naive side. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. And his enthusiasm's lovely. I just wonder if sometimes it just teeters over into um... mm, pushiness. Mm. Yes, I was mm. wondering about it. But just a, a hint of uh, arrogance. Mm. And there are bound to be applicants vastly more experienced oh, than he is. Because I mean, he's exactly. only just come oh, out of college. Come on, I don't believe college. this. You're just punishing the boy because he makes you all feel old. Yes, absolutely. You're all being totally irrational and very unfair. Oh, I no, I. No, it's pure, unadulterated envy, 100% proof. And I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. Right. Uncle! You'll never guess what's happened. Will you stop calling me uncle? <laughs> That's right, he's a great uncle. It's all right. Can... <laughs> all right, we can do without the semantics. Mr. Dent, um, I'm sorry. You'll probably think I've got a bit of a cheek after I talk to you about the researcher's job and everything, but... You see, I went for an interview two weeks ago and I hadn't heard anything, so I didn't think I got it. But they just rang and I've been accepted as a trainee reporter at NBC. I can't believe <laughs> well it. Well done, my boy. Obviously, the Davenport talent shone through. I must go <laughs> ring Mum and Dad. Yes, of course. And may I say, Jack, uh, well, how pleased we all are and, well, you deserve it. And you carry our best wishes. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> well done. A reporter... At 21? I was still making the tea at 21. <laughs> Jammy little upstart. 21? 21? 21. 21. Oh, for God's sake, get a grip! <coughs> Look at your grown men going to pieces just because somebody's landed a decent job and he happens to be 21. So he's 21. God, big deal. What of it? Actually, I was wrong. He's still 20. 20? 20! <laughs> Well, the way I see it, we should blockade their ports, strangle their economy, and if necessary, just sink their ships. Then the bloody French had let our land through. John Gummer says he's very cross with the French farmers. Oh, no. Well, that'll have them quaking in their boots. Why does Gummer always remind me of the kid at school who used to beat up for no reason? Hmm. What's the latest on the Iraqi blockade? Well, it's beginning to bite. They're suffering severe shortages. Apparently, in the whole of Iraq now, there is not a single US flag left for them to burn. Ah, oh, no, I don't believe it! What? Petrol's going up another seven p. They're bloody robbers! All right, all right, calm down. Give BP a ring and get a quote. But keep it nice and objective, OK? Don't worry, George. I will be detached and professional. Hello, could I speak to your chief extortionist, please? <laughs> <laughs>